still strong. Belmont is all that. The conference champions, baby, let's go! A walk-off home run over the left field wall. It's Lily Hallam winning the women's 800. Welcome, everybody, to the Belmont Bruins podcast, hosted by students for students. Um, I am your host today, Tate Pearson, number 20 from the men's basketball team, and I'm joined with the other number 20, um, Conley Chen. Conley, what are you up to? Uh, not much, just uh, finishing up finals and excited to be here and uh, for you to host. Yeah. All right. First order of business. Rank these five fast food restaurants. You ready? Let's do it. McDonald's, Wendy's, Taco Bell. Um, you can't put Chick-fil-A in there. Chick-fil-A is obviously a number Unbeatable. one. Unbeatable. <laughs> uh, Burger King and Arby's. Mm, okay. Um, I'm going to put McDonald's at the bottom. I, I do not touch McDonald's. Uh, Taco Bell probably next. I have not had Taco Bell in like years and I'm sure it's because I got sick from it. Um, I feel like everyone does. Um, next I would put Burger King because I surprisingly really like Whoppers. Um, and then we're left with Wendy's and Arby's. Yep. Okay. I'm going to do Arby's next. Cause I used to eat Arby's after like every single cross country meet. When I was a kid, when I was in like seventh grade, I would go get Arby's right after I ran. And Country. wow, number one, Wendy's. I love me some Wendy's. Love the frosty chicken nuggets, fries, all of it. The frosty float. I've not had the frosty float. How's that? Very good. I'm good. Sure it's really good. Very good. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. Wendy's has got to be number one. It's just. Yeah. It's the best. When you got to treat yourself, sometimes you just got to go get, four get a uh, four for four and the uh, Frosty Float. Is Cookout in there for you? Cookout is in there. I would say Cookout is probably <clears throat> three behind <laughs> Wendy's and the McDonald's. All right. Yeah, your face looked – you looked a little irritated that I had McDonald's at, at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a little irritated, but it's all good. I, mean, I just there's just nothing at McDonald's for me. I mean, maybe their fries, maybe, but other than that, I just I don't really touch it. For sure, fries. For sure, fries. You got <laughs> a question that, for me? Huh? You got a question for me? Yeah, I do actually. I was uh, talking about this with some people the other day. We were ranking sauces from these restaurants, so it was like Chick Fil A sauce, Cane sauce, Zaxby's sauce. Or cookout sauce. Conley, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be straightforward with you right here. This is weird about me. I want everybody to get to know me. I don't like sauces. You're not a sauce person. No, I my favorite sauce, Burger Up, Twelve South, House Made Ketchup, phenomenal. Absolutely. But I'm I'm just a ketchup guy. I'm an easy guy. But I, I don't I don't like sauces. Interesting. I was actually telling people like I'm mad that I found out how good like ranch and honey mustard were because now I can't eat anything without ranch or honey mustard. Hmm. Interesting. I can't agree, but you know what? It's okay. You're good. All right. <laughs> how are practices going? They're going great. Um, we're just getting ready for the season. Uh, our freshmen are great, and our team is uh, really starting to connect and just really um, play the way you know we hope to. You know, for the season, it's been it's been a wild ride this year. I'm sure you know all about that. Um, mm -hmm. But I I'm I'm actually super confident in our team and that we're going to be ready to go. What about you guys? Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, obviously, COVID year, everybody talks about it all the time. We don't want to talk about it too much. Um, but we are – I'm just proud of our guys and how they've been – how we have been ready to go whenever we come back from – I think I lost you guys maybe. But uh, whenever we come back from a two-week shutdown, whatever it might be, because of a positive test, we're always ready to go. 
Um, guys are obviously able to do whatever they can in their rooms, wherever they are, or at home if they choose to go home. So we're, uh, yeah, I, I'm just, I'm super excited to play. And I just, I just can't wait to get on the court with these guys. Yeah. Um, well, Tate, like we're really excited to have you host this week and, you know, we picked you for a reason. We knew that you're a fan favorite around Belmont. Everyone knows who you are. You're a star at Belmont. You know it. And, um, yeah, you're just somebody that, like, everyone loves and everybody loves to hear from and see around. You're so nice to everybody. But um, what are five things that people don't know about you? Wow. Kylie, first off, you are that's, – that's sweet. Uh, but no, I disagree. Um, I uh, five things people don't know about me. Wow. First off, can can the sauces be one? I don't like sauces. Sauce can be one. That's a big. Uh, one. Yeah, for sure. Uh, number two, huge candy guy. I love candy. Any type of sweet. Don't like chocolate, but any like sweet. I, I have a PowerPoint actually of my top ten favorite candies. Uh, just in case you might want to see that later. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to think of uh, some other things people might not know about me. Um, I have a five-year-old black lab at home. She is the sweetest dog ever. Um, yeah, that's that would be four. Five would be... Um, that I, I'm a new found golf addict. I'm, I'm addicted to golf. We all, my whole team got, got addicted to it in quarantine because that was something we could do safely. Um, and we've, we've just kept running with it since then. So I would say those are, those are five things people probably don't know about me. Who's your favorite golfer? Mm, great question. I mean, Tiger is obviously one, but everybody would say Tiger. Um, the one name we know. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I love Tiger. Uh, I'm also a big uh, Jordan Speed guy. I like Speed, Under Armour guy. You know, representing, and I like Speed. So, Conley, you asked about me. Now, let me uh, let me ask about you. Obviously, you were host week one. You kicked us off. Um, so, what is it like being the producer of this show, and also? What was your reaction when when you thought, okay, Tate's coming on to this show today. What what are we going to get into tonight? Talk about those two things. Well, um, I have been a huge podcast fan since quarantine started. I talked about that in my first episode. I listen to them all the time now. It's become something that I just think is so great. And so whenever... I got the opportunity to, I was super pumped. I jumped at it. I thought like, how fun would that be to, to head up something like that at Belmont and for it maybe to be something big and um, doing the first episode, it was so much fun. And Christian asked me if I wanted to like hang around and, you know, really be a part of this podcast. And so I was all about it. And, you know, you were an easy choice for sure. And so it's uh it's fun to be on here and to you know see the behind the scenes and still get to be a part of it um but i am super excited to see what you have to say today for sure there's a there's a lot you can talk about so i'm really interested to see what comes well everybody we've got a fun night plan talking to some coaches some uh some teammates some former teammates stick around you'll get to see who those people are um, calmly thank you for, for what you've done putting the show together and directing um, so yeah we're going to hit a quick break and then we'll be right back with my next segment
Welcome back, everybody. I'm joined with my teammate, number three, Luke Smith. Luke, what are you doing tonight, man? Nothing much. Just trying to stay in my room, stay safe, so we can uh, play some basketball. There you go. Uh, Luke, before we really get into anything basketball-related, I just wanted to talk about our golf matches. Um, It's a big thing that's sweeping the team. We got scramble partners left and right. My scramble partner, all I mean, obviously, is EJ, and we're the best team. Uh, haven't always shown it, but we are the best team. Uh, and yeah, just I, I want I want to see your opinion on on me and EJ as a scramble team. Y'all, y'all are good. Uh, y'all need a little more mental toughness. I think that's where uh, me and Murph kind of get y'all. Uh-huh. Me and Murph are both pretty scrappy people, so uh, even when we're not playing playing well, we can talk trash. You know, get in y'all's head and put a nice round together, but I mean, we're two and O. Oh, so I would say uh, me and Murph are at the top of the mountain right now and everyone else is trying to come get us. So well, we'll see. Murph was talking about, about getting out there tomorrow, but uh, I might take a day off and, uh, you know, just let y'all down there at the bottom uh, duke it out until you want to come play the best. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's, that's uh, I wouldn't say we're at the bottom. I wouldn't say y'all are at the top, but. We'll just no, we'll I'd say it Mitch, it, Mitch and Shanks are probably at the top, and then uh, and then we'll slide it down to me and Murph. But um, you know, we'll see. I don't know if anyone really plays besides us, like eight. So yeah, hey, we'll we'll settle it on the course. Um, also, I wanted to get into uh, you showed us a video earlier this week of you and Grayson playing. AAU basketball together as kids. How old were you, you guys in this video? You know, I, we were probably like – I honestly couldn't tell. I was so young. I was probably uh, maybe eight or nine. And we didn't really know we even played each other until like last year when we started talking about it. And then uh, we were working on a project the other night for one of our classes. and we decided to look something up on YouTube and see if we could find it. And there it was me and Murph playing each other and he rips me and gets a steal and a layup and stuff like that. So it was just regular stuff. He played exactly how he does now. Doesn't shoot it, just passes the ball and played his defense. So, but it was all his team's highlights. So we didn't really get to see much of me. So you said, you said you had a buzz, which is (laughs) a lot different than your haircut now. Yeah. Yeah. How's that look right now? I've had to throw the hat on before I got on here with y'all, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've considered going back to the buzz, but I cracked my head open when I was a kid, so I got a pretty misshapen head. So I'm probably just going to keep this hairdo for a while. Probably smart. It makes you cuter. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> so you're saying the OVC Defensive Player of the Year has been that way since he was a kid, Murph? Yeah, I don't really have a lot of memory of it, but from watching that, I mean, he was getting steals left and right. There's even a – I, I was getting embarrassed. There's even a v- video of Mo scoring on me on there. So, and Mo had Rex specs back then. So I don't really. It was pretty tough for me to watch. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, what's so cool about our team is obviously I played AAU with Grayson and Caleb and Pedro, uh, but Pedro transferred out. But mainly Grayson. I played uh, AAU with Grayson for. I mean, all of high school. So that was really cool coming in with him and also with Caleb too, just coming in knowing people um, and already having a little foundation of friends and and how they play. And I think that's really paid off for us in the long run. Um, so Yeah, I, do, I agree. Um, it's kind of cool to just see how everyone knew each other before we got here and stuff like that. And, you, you know, like I know a few of Ben's friends from Atlanta and stuff like that. And it's just kind of funny to see how that all connects in the basketball world. Absolutely. So speaking of connecting in the basketball world, I was thinking for our next segment, we would we would prank call some of our teammates, um, teammates and coaches. I don't know if you want to stay on for all of these or some of these, um, but that's what we'll get into next. Yeah, I'll do a couple. Luke, Luke, so obviously we are local kids. Uh, I grew up in Nashville. You grew up in Knoxville. And I know for me, it means a lot playing for Belmont, putting the Belmont jersey on, uh, the navy red and white, because I grew up sitting courtside at some games, uh, coming to as many games as possible. So I just, I just want to kind of get into what does it mean 
you know, repping our city, repping our, our state, playing in Tennessee, the state where we grew up. What does that mean to you um, when you put on the Belmont jersey, knowing you're playing in the state you grew up in? Yeah, it means a lot. Belmont was always a place that I wanted to come, like in high school and stuff. My dad and I would watch them in the tournament and stuff like that. And he just I would always say, you know, you'd be a great fit there. I love the way they play and stuff like that. And I mean, it didn't work out that way, but somehow in a roundabout way, I got here. And the fact that it's in Tennessee, in Nashville, and, you know, I have a lot of family around and stuff like that that can come to games. I mean, it means a lot being able to play in Tennessee. And I grew up here, lived all, all my life here, even when I went to a different uh, college and stuff. For everybody who's listening who doesn't know your story to get to Belmont, I mean, I think it's one of the coolest stories. You were a finalist for Mr. Basketball in high school, right? Ended up going to Swanee. Yeah. Talk, talk a little bit about your journey from, from, you know, Mr. Basketball, going to Swanee, and then coming to, coming to Belmont, and kind of how that all came about. Yeah, so in high school – I was small. I was like 155 pounds, maybe. And I just didn't really look the part. <clears throat> I had the stats and I had the accolades and stuff like that. But, you know, I just didn't devote enough time to my body and getting bigger and stuff like that. And that's really only on me. So I didn't really have the Division One offers that I wanted when I came out. So UAB and Davidson wanted me to walk on. And I didn't really want to do that, so I decided to go a different route. And I went to Suwannee where I could go in and play right away. And, and Coach Hedge, who's here now, recruited me there. And, I mean, it was a great two years, a lot of fun. We made an NCAA tournament. Um, and then Coach uh, Hedge left and came here. And then um, it kind of – the apples kind of fell in the right place. And I was able to come here, and I could not be happier that I'm here now. Awesome. Well, I know, uh, I know we're glad you're here. Um, so, so what was that transition like? Um, talk just, just briefly talk about, you know, the portal and kind of trying to get your waiver, different things like that, that not a bunch of Belmont athletes normally experience. Yeah. Um, so for the D3, when you're coming out of D3, all you have to do is get an individual waiver for every team that you want to talk to. So I got one to Belmont and one to, I hate to say this, but one to Lipscomb. Um, and so I talked to, they didn't really express any interest or anything like that. So um, Belmont was kind of the only place that I could go. I took a visit in the summer and I made my decision shortly after that because I had to enroll in a summer class quickly after that to be able to get on campus. But uh, it was weird. I couldn't really tell any of my friends about it when I was at school and stuff like that, which was weird. So I had to call them and tell them I was leaving when I got home and stuff like that. But um, it's worked out in a great way, and I'm really excited to be able to play this year. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if you want to, let's let's uh, let's get to calling some teammates. All right, guys, we are back. We've got it all set up. We're about to get into calling some some coaches and teammates. Luke, uh, you got any recommendations on who we call first? Give Scanlon a call. Dan, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> what is up? You are here with me and Luke. Uh, we are doing a little Belmont Bruins podcast. We thought you would be a good person to call in our calling teammates segment of this podcast. Well, I'm honored to be selected as a guest. <laughs> yeah, hey, what are you doing? Me? Don't lie right now. What are you doing? Right now, I am watching a history documentary called "The Mankind: The Story of All of Us," and I'm watching the barbarians <laughs> sack Rome. <laughs> and I ask why? <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I'm kind of getting smarter. You know, learning learning some new knowledge and stuff. Might go hit the weight room a little bit later. So, if when one day I get smarter and stronger, how much more can you ask for? 
Scanlon, Bruin Nation has been uh, wanting to know about your recent obsession with mixed martial arts. So can you take us into your um, experience and your journey with that, please? <laughs> um, yeah, I just kind of decided I don't really want to play sports that have a ball in it anymore. I'm tired of football, basketball, and softball and stuff that old men play. So I've decided to do something that I was never allowed to do as a kid which is martial arts. And uh, yeah, I do jujitsu and Muay Thai. And I am currently in the process of trying to turn my body into a lethal weapon. And, uh, you know, that's just where I'm going right now. It's actually a lot of fun. I'm learning some cool stuff. Um, And you're not supposed to use it in any aggressive style. So it's self-defense only. So where, where would one go to find you taking one of these classes? There's actually quite a bit of them here in Nashville. The one that I go to is on Church Street, Zanshin Dojo. Shout out Zanshin Dojo. And I also do uh, Muay Thai at Nashville MMA. Um, There's more people doing it. These are not Belmont sponsored ads, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) It's becoming more normalized than you think because of the UFC. I think the UFC has done a good job kind of creating awareness. I think it's still really far away from being a popular sport, but it's definitely people at least know about it. Wow. Scan, thank you so much for the call. You are exactly the right person we should have called. We're going to move on to calling some other teammates. So thank you for joining and good luck in your martial arts career. Yeah, don't be afraid to call me again. You guys haven't called in months. <laughs> <laughs> right. Quickly, before you go, Scan, yeah. I, I, I want the people at home to know that you will call me randomly on accident. Can you please explain why you accidentally call me? Uh, so I get out of work every day at about, you know, a little after four and I hop in the car and I turn Siri on, on my phone. And I say, call Peyton, who is my girlfriend. And unfortunately, Peyton and Pate sound very similar to Siri. So Siri quite often dials up Tate and I say, hello, or I just kind of look at the phone and I'm like, oh my God, I'm calling the wrong person. And this happens uh, actually quite often. So exactly. thank you. Bruin Nation, there's your little uh, information that you didn't need to know about Tyler Scanlon's life. Well, Scanlon, thank you so much. Who should we call next? Uh, call Nick Muzinski, man. Tell that kid to get in the gym. Get ready for week one. <laughs> All right. We'll give, we'll give Moose a call. Scan, good to talk to you. We'll talk soon. All right. See you guys. Okay, See bye. You, that was that awesome. went exactly how I thought it was going to go. That was awesome. All right, let's get on. Uh, Nick Mazinski. Should we go with Nick Mazinski? Yeah, give 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 Moose a call. This might not be G rated. <laughs> hey, Moose, we just got done talking to Scanlon, and. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Scanlon was talking about his mixed martial arts career and oh, no. uh, and then ended the conversation by telling us to tell you to get in the gym and get ready for week one. What, what do you have to say to Scanlon? I think Scanlon's a local joker. Uh, <laughs> has, uh, that's way past his prime. He, he peaked at his uh, – he peaked at um, his uh, – was the championship game against OVC, and Scan hasn't touched the basketball since. <laughs> Does that surprise you? No, no, it doesn't surprise me at all. That's Scam. Scam's a man of many talents. That is true. We also are going to talk to Seth later on in the show. Uh, yeah. Do you think Seth has touched the basketball since his career has ended? Um, probably not basketball. No, probably not. Fishing rod for sure. I don't know about <laughs> basketball. Fishing rod for sure. Man, Moose, thank you for answering the call. Uh, we really are just checking in with different people, seeing how they're doing. And uh, we're going to get on to some more calls. So, so I appreciate it. Anybody else we should talk to? We should talk to Caleb for sure. And, and Riley Epley. Definitely call Riley Epley. <laughs> All right, we'll call Riley next. Call Riley. Thanks. All right. See you, Moose. See you. Bye. That was, that was, again, exactly how I thought it would go. We'll move on to Riley Epley now.
Riley Epley. Hello, hello. Can you hey, hear me? What's up, man? What's up? Hey, you're on the Belmont podcast with me and Luke Smith. We're, we're just kind of checking in with teammates. What are you doing? What do you mean, the Belmont podcast? The Belmont Bruins podcast. Check it out. It's on YouTube. Don't uh, ever take that disrespectful tone when talking about the Belmont podcast again, okay? Okay, Mr. Smith. <laughs> what what are you up to on this Friday night? Uh, I'm watching some True Detective, getting a little relaxation in, uh, enjoying the, the lovely weather outside today. How are you enjoying the weather while inside watching True Detective? I've done both today, Tate. I was outside for probably three hours, went on a walk, uh, got a haircut. I am not in quarantine. Um, yeah. So I went out there, and then I've been watching True Detective. Went on walking my girlfriend. There you go. There you go. Riley, um, you're one of the most dedicated students I've ever seen. What drives you to be so smart and so good at school? I don't know. I just think that it comes with making a decision in your mind that you have the choice to do what you want to do. And when I come to the classroom or come to something, if I want to do it, then I don't even worry or get anxious about it because I just decide this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it to the best of my ability and it'll work out or it won't. You can only do your best. Wow. Well, that really, that was motivation. Wonderful. <laughs> motivation from Riley Epley tonight. Riley, thank you for joining the Belmont Bruins podcast. You should go check these out. Uh, they're, they're on YouTube and they're, they're pretty awesome. All right, Riley. All right, I'll get. I'll check it out, boys. You have a good night. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, see you, Riley. <laughs> All right, see you. All right, Tater, I'm about to have to run on you. Perfect, Luke. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Um, do you want me to try Coach R one more time? Because he would be so fun. Coach R, what's up? What's going on, Tate? Nothing less. Just recording a little Belmont Bruins podcast. You know, you are one of the most highly requested guests we've ever had on this podcast. Well, I guess you haven't had that many guests on the podcast, though. Uh, they just said to call you. So well, we I'm, check in and, and see what you were doing. I'm, I'm honored to be a part of your podcast. Talk, talk to me about how many phone calls you make in a day. I make a good number of phone calls. I was on the phone this morning. I I would say I probably make between 20 and 30 phone calls a day. Just a killer recruiter. Just, just trying, just trying to find the next Tate Pearson. (laughs) How's, uh, how's young KJ doing? I hear him in the background. He's in the background right now. He is, uh, eating a chocolate chip cookie and, um, some oat milk. Um, so he's, he's living, he's living his best life right now. Yeah. Coach, we talked to Scan earlier, and Scan is uh, is practicing MMA now. I didn't know if you knew that he's doing. Uh, I I can't even remember what he said. Muay Thai and something else. What do you think of your former player uh, now going on to mixed martial arts? <laughs> I mean, you poured in so many hours into this guy into his basketball career, and now he just decided, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna move on to uh, to MMA. How does that make you feel? He's just he's just throwing it all away. I mean, my goodness gracious! I mean, he he could have you know he could have been a lead bound guy. I don't know what he's doing, but hey, you know what? How I look at it, as long as he's healthy, as long as he's happy, I hope the best for him and his MMA career. Wow, aren't you just so sweet? I'm trying. I'm trying. Qatar, thanks for picking up. Go be with your family. Go be with KJ. Uh, good talking to you. Tate, it's a pleasure as always. We'll talk soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks, teammates and coaches who answered my phone call. That segment went way better than I could have even expected. Next up, my conversation with Seth.
everybody. Welcome back to the Belmont Bruins podcast. I'm joined here with number 50, Seth Adelsberger. Seth, how are you doing, man? I'm doing well, Tate. How are you? You know, I can't complain. I'm glad to see you. Um, you. Let's let's give everybody an update with what you're doing. I mean, I know you're like some sort of water scientist, doctor guy now. So so tell us tell us what you're doing. Uh, so I'm at Indiana University Bloomington. Uh, I'm currently in the first year of grad school. Obviously, I just I just graduated. Um, so I'm doing a my master's right now. Um, so it's research based. Um, so I'm just doing some research on agricultural effects on waterways and stuff. Um, doing some teaching too, and then taking classes. So, yep, it's basically what I've been up to and sitting on my computer a bunch on Zoom. So it's great. So teaching, are you like, are you leading a class teaching or are you just like teacher's assistant, grading, doing something? I'm, like I'm, a, I'm a TA. So I, basically I just run the lab section. So lab section's mine. So I teach the lab, grade the lab, all of that. So that's basically my little domain for better or worse. You've got to be one of the tallest TAs ever. There's a chance. Yeah, we're, we're probably we're probably pushing the 99th percentile, I would think. So, but it's so, all on Zoom, so no one knows anyways. So talk to me, what is, what is the ideal job that you want as studying agricultural effects on water? That's tough. I don't, I don't know if there, I mean, I think something for the USGS would be really cool. Um, where I'd get to go out and be in the field some, and then also, you know, kind of be back crunching numbers. I think kind of a mixture, but I don't know if there's necessarily an, an ideal job, if that makes sense. I think that there's a lot of things that would kind of fit in that wheelhouse that I'd really enjoy. Yeah. Well, good. Well, I mean, I'm sure there's a ton of people who are so glad you're here. You are a fan favorite. Let's, uh, let's talk about your social media presence uh, with, with Big Seth 50. It's a, for everybody who doesn't know, this is an Instagram account titled Big Seth 50 that is not run by Seth Alsberger. No. It's, it's still undecided who it's run by, but it's a common mistake. So, so let's just talk about that, Seth. You know, um, honestly, I have to say, I, I blushed a little bit when I found out someone made a fan page. You know, I, I don't know what I did to deserve that kind of a blessing, um, but whoever's running it was brilliant. I thought it was hilarious. And, uh, it was just, it was kind of cool, you know, especially for someone like me, who's basically uh, a social media, anti so I'm not anti social media, but I'm not on it. So it was kind of interesting to see like what that world is, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. it was kind of cool though. You know, it was neat that someone took the time to do that. I thought, I thought that was really cool. So, I mean, you, you get a lot of love on there. I, I think Belmont men's basketball, whenever your, your picture is posted, they tag that account in there. So hopefully whoever's <laughs> running it has your best interest in mind. You know, Seth, the theory is that this is a kid from summer basketball camps who I guess loves you and just made a fan page for you. Who, like, who do you think this might be? I don't know. I could see a couple of my teammates possibly doing it just to screw with me a little bit. Um, I've got a couple of buddies too that definitely would have done it. So I, I think that, I think there's a few good options, but I think there are some mischievous kids from camp too that would love to do something like this. I know kids from camp have made other accounts, uh, fan accounts for players. So I, I wouldn't be overly surprised, but whoever was writing it was doing an excellent job. Absolutely. <laughs> the content is incredible. All right. Seth, let's let's get into some memories, um, basketball related. Uh, the first memory that comes to mind with you on the court is for sure Jacksonville. So we're, you know, this is March Madness, your junior year. We win the first game against Temple up in Dayton, right? And then we uh, we which is which is our program's first tournament win ever. Crazy awesome. Uh, we're on a little bit of a high, right? And then we hop on a plane at 1 a.m. the next day. So that would have been, um, I can't even remember what day that was. We, we flew down to Jacksonville then and, uh, and had a game, you know, not even 24 hours away, right? So we play in that game, you know, it's up and down battle against Maryland. They kind of have the momentum, right? Going back and forth, they end up with the momentum. And then you have two 
monstrous putbacks, right? I mean, Jim shaking, people hugging, like, talk to, talk to me what goes through your mind, right? When you see the ball come off and you know, like, this is mine, I'm about to dunk this. My first thought was, I didn't even remember they were back to back. I gotta be honest, I was in for like eight or 10 minutes in a row at that point, or through that stretch, right? So at some point in that stretch was when I had the two dunks, but I was in for eight or 10 minutes. Um, and my first thought was, I don't know how I jumped that high right now. <laughs> I, was, I was a little shocked actually, um, that I was able, I was able to get up high enough, but I didn't even realize, I think you're the one that told me when I got off, you said, Hey, those were back to back. I was like, were they really like, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it was just neat. Um, you know, that was, that was a really a fun game. Like, even though the outcome wasn't what we wanted, like, I think we proved without a shadow of a doubt that we belonged on that stage and that we could compete and perform very well on that stage. Um, and so I think that was a huge moment for the program. I mean, Seth, I was so excited. I remember standing up and screaming and being, cause I was on the bench at that time. And I just, I, I was like, I'm going to pass out. It wasn't that good. You're excited. Oh, you froze. Uh Oh, there we go. You're back. Can you see me now? Yeah. Can you see me now? Well, what I was saying was I was so excited. I just remember almost passing out just, just from screaming. <laughs> It wasn't that good. Uh, and it wasn't worth that. Thank you. That, that makes my heart happy, but it wasn't worth that. You said you, you can't believe you jumped that high. I would put your athleticism at the top of the list of people I've played with. And I've played with some good people. I think you're one of the most raw athletic people I've played with. Well, thank you. That, that means a lot. You're I know welcome. you've been around some athletes in your time and maybe, I, I don't really know. I just, if I can jump that high, I can jump that high. That is what it is. There you go. All right. Sorry to put you on the spot. I know that was a tough question. Uh, going back to, to Jacksonville dunking, um, our moms sat b beside each other during that game. And I, my mom came up to me after the game, fired up for you, and was just saying, Seth's mom was just so sweet. She was crying. She was so happy for the boy. <laughs> So happy to be on that stage. What kind of relationship do you have with your parents and with your mom in particular that she was just so beside herself, excited for you? I, I think there's a couple of factors. The first, I'm the youngest. So that obviously does play some effect um, with a parent for sure. Um, I'm very close with both my parents. So like, I don't know how many people know this, but I was homeschooled. Um, I only went to high school for public school. So I spent a lot of time with my mom and and we're, we're really close. Like I still talk, text her like every night. Um, so, you know, they were an incredible support system and I can't, you know, I'll never be able to show like how thankful I am for everything that they did and all the opportunities that they gave me. Um, so, you know, looking back, it's, it's, it's really cool to see like everything they put into me, I was able to kind of use in a way um, to do some really cool stuff, whether it be a dunk or, or you know, whatever, but um, you know, I, I just love my parents to death and I'm super thankful um, for the influence that they've had on me. And, you know, like, it might be cliche, but it's like, I don't really feel like I deserve them sometimes. Um, they're just two really good people. Yeah, absolutely. Well, since we're talking about memories, I'm gonna ask you a question. What is a memory, the first memory that comes to mind that you think of when you think of playing for Belmont basketball? It could be, it could be oh, funny, wow. it could be awesome, whatever you, whatever you think. Give me the oh, I don't even know. There's, there's kind of two that there was the one. Um, it was the, I think it might have been the first game I actually played in. It was at Florida, my redshirt freshman year, and you know, Coach Bird definitely never put in new plays the day of a game ever. He would never do that. Um, those of you who don't know, he did that all the time. And so I get in, and he calls a play. I don't even know. It was like 42 red. He looks at me and said, "Do you know?" And I was like, "Nope." <laughs> completely blanked and I remember I looked over the couple guys on the bench were just like oh that's that's not good <laughs> um so probably probably that one um and the other one would definitely be Murray State last year um just because you know that was it was the last chance for for me and Mike and and for really for Scan too 
Um, and just being able to, to get that win as seniors, you know, going, you know, we had not gotten that win for a long time. We didn't win the tournament. That was what, it's a five-year gap, four-year gap, something like that. And so being able to, to win that game against someone who's a huge rival, like they're always great games. The Murray games are my favorite every year. Um, just having the opportunity to win that and the way we want it to and be on the court at the end of the game, like that was super special. And that's something I'll definitely hold on to uh, forever. Yeah, not not many seniors get to go out with the win, Seth. So you're you're in an elite group with with winning your last game ever. I think we're, does that make us NCAA co-champions technically, since there was no <laughs> tournament? I think it does. I think it does. I just wanted to check. Um, <laughs> Seth, that's awesome. That's a great. Sorry. One. I remember uh, talking to Scanlon after you know, obviously pandemic hit, cancel March Madness, bummer. Um, but, but I remember talking to Scanlon and Scanlon said, you know what? Because obviously Tyler Scanlon came in for one year, uh, his grad year, played at Boston University before, never went to the NCAA tournament, uh, never won their conference tournament. And so, you know, all of us were feeling bad for you, for our seniors, you, Mike, and uh, Scan. And I, I vividly, I will always remember Scan saying, you know what, beating Murray State there that last game, that was worth it. And, and I don't even need to go to the NCAA tournament. That's all I could want um, to end my career. So I just thought that was a really cool perspective. Um, I would agree. And I think, I think, too, I mean, there's such a silver line, like we didn't get in the tournament, but we, we at least got to finish the conference tournament. Um, that was one of the things I really... I really felt bad for a lot of seniors. Like there were what, maybe 10 conferences that had a champion, 10 or 10 or 15, something, it was very few. Um, not, not the majority for sure. And, you know, I felt bad for a lot of seniors. I did, you know, some games got shut down at half or when they were warming up, like we at least got through that and knew we were going to go, but there are a lot of teams that were kind of, there's a little bit of what if, like what would have happened, you know, if we played so-and-so in the tournament. Um, but there were a lot of teams that they, they didn't even have any closure on the regular season or on their conference tournament. And so I think at the end of the day, like it's a huge blessing that we got to play that game at Murray, like even though it, or against Murray, um, even though it hurt not to get to play in the tournament again, we still got some closure on the season and knew how good we were. So there's always that to take home too. Absolutely. Well, Seth, last question for you, all right? Bruin Bucks, what's the best restaurant on Bruin Bucks? Currently, or that used to be on Bruin Bucks. Because I heard the selection's gone down a little bit. It's gone down, but we also have some some new front runners. So oh, can you just what, tell me what what's old old best and, and current best. I mean, the two that really come to mind for me are going to be like Urban Cookhouse and Cookery. Mm. Uh, Nashville was very solid as well, but I think Urban and Urban Cookhouse and Cookery are probably the two tops for me. Two most visited for sure. Solid, oh, yeah. solid answer, Seth. Uh, Seth, well, I appreciate you joining the show. Everybody, thank you for letting me host. Everybody listening, I hope you guys enjoy. Um, and tune in next time. <laughs>